welcome back let's continue with our arithmetic pipeline organization in the previous video i just given an introduction regarding the what are the computer arithmetic principles is okay so there we had seen about the fixed point and floating point representation now let's have a look on what is this arithmetic pipeline organization for floating point addition and subtraction if you want to perform a floating point addition and subtraction a pipeline has to be organized how it is going to be organized that you are going to learn in this video with an example okay so before going to start this arithmetic uh, pipeline organization for floating point addition and subtraction i want to give a just brief idea regarding when we are talking about arithmetic means we'll get an idea arithmetic logic unit so this is the main unit which performs this operation so this arithmetic logic unit performs what type of operations it can perform fixed and floating point operations floating point operations separately so not in the single so each is having a separately fixed fixed point operations are performed separately and the floating point operations are going to perform separately so the arithmetic logic unit is going to perform fixed and floating point operations so if you consider the fixed point fixed point we already i already said fixed point it's nothing but it, it's an integer unit so for doing the fixed point calculations an integer unit is present in the arithmetic logic unit so for floating point unit it can be built either a part of this floating point can be built either a part of central processor so whatever the central processor is there microprocessor so it becomes a part of the central processor or you can add as a separate coprocessor separate coprocessor so i think you get clarity so arithmetic logic unit is going to perform fixed and floating point operations so for fixed point we are using an integer unit separately and for floating point operations it can be integrated in the central microprocessor itself or if you want you can take the separate coprocessor just like an integer unit what we are doing for fixed point okay so this arithmetic logic arithmetic logic unit is going to perform the scalar and vector operations that can be differ in the area of uh, register files okay and control mechanisms involves also here the one thing i'll i all anyhow i'll explain about this sec, uh, scalar and the vector operations in the coming videos so don't worry about it okay so now we will discuss about this arithmetic pipeline organization so first of all why we are using this arithmetic pipelines why we can't only do for the arithmetic by using alu uh, which is going to perform all logical operations arithmetic operations why we are working on the pipeline organization in arithmetic why we are going for the arithmetic pipeline organization rather than going for the simple alu because arithmetic pipeline arithmetic pipeline are used in high speed computers so we are going to use this arithmetic pipeline organization organization in the high speed computers so why we are using the high speed computers because to better understand so to better understand system we are using the arithmetic pipeline organization structure in the high speed computers so now let us consider an example for this arithmetic pipeline unit for floating point addition and subtraction okay i think you get the clarity on what exactly arithmetic pipeline is okay so this arithmetic pipeline is mainly it is going to perform the fixed and floating point operations okay pipe in a pipeline fan manner so mainly it is used for the high speed computers for to better understanding so now let's discuss about this arithmetic pipeline floating point binary numbers okay so let us consider a uh, let the consider the inputs of example let the inputs of floating point floating point binary numbers defined as so let's take x is equal to a into 2 power a and the y is equal to b into 2 power b so these are the two inputs floating point binary numbers defined as like this okay so let let's take uh, we have to perform the binary number calculations 
So let's take A as 0 0.9504. This is the decimal number into 10 power 3. Okay. So this is a binary representation. So here I am writing the decimal. 0 0.8200 into 10, per 10 square. So this is what they are given in inputs. Now what is this where A and B are two fractions. So these are the fractions right. These are the fractions. Two fractions represented as a mantisa. So these are the mantisas. And A and B. This A and B we call it as an exponents. So the combined operation of floating point addition and subtraction is going to be divided into four segments. So you have to remember these four segments. This combined, if you want to perform the combined operation of floating point addition and subtraction. So the complete it is divided into four segment. So what is that four segment? First segment is compare the exponents. First you need to compare the exponents by subtraction. By doing the subtraction, try to compare the exponents. Next, align the mantissa. So, whatever the mantissa is there, you have to align the mantissa. That is the second segment. And third segment is add or subtract the mantissa. So, after aligning, try to add or subtract the mantissa. Okay. So, then next word. Next, normalize the result. Normalize the result. So this is what exactly the complete operations of the floating point addition and subtraction is going to divide it this into four stages. So these are the four stages. Okay. So now let's try to convert the given numbers. Okay. Into the binary number. Okay. Whatever the into normalized number not the binary. So just you have to take it. You have to normalize the value. Normalize the result. So, that can be performed by using these four segments. Okay. So, first I will explain this uh, concept. Then I will show you the flowchart of how to perform this calculation. So, first one is what? Compare. Compare the exponents. Compare the exponents by subtraction. So, this is the first segment, right? This is segment one. Segment 1. So, to compare the exponent by subtraction, then you have to determine the large exponent. So, what is the value they are given? 0 0.9504 into 10 cube. Okay. And the y value is 0 0.8200 into 10 square. So, to compare the exponents by subtraction, the first thing is you have to take the large exponent is chosen in the expression of the result. So, what is the large exponent here? 3 is the large exponent. That means 3 minus 2. That is 1. So, now determine how many times, let me write that point so that it will be, it will be referred for you. Determine how many times the mantisas associated, associated with smaller component, smaller exponent must be shifted to right. What do you understand from this step? Why I had done the subtraction? So, here I have to compare the exponents by subtraction. So, here the highest, uh, take the high, largest exponent is chosen from the result. So, 3 minus 2, 1. I got 1 as a result. So, what I have to do next? Determine how many times. So why I am doing this? So, to determine how many times the mantissa associate with the smaller exponent. So, the smaller exponent mantissa is this. 0 0.8200 is a smaller exponent. So, the mantissa associated with the smaller exponent must be shifted to right. It has to shift it to right. Okay. So, how many times? That is going to be determined by this first step. So, it has to be shifted one time. So, first step is segment is compare the exponent by subtraction. Okay, I take in the largest exponent and I perform the subtraction. So, I got only 1. So, remember that. So, you got 1. In the second step, second segment, align mantissa. How you are going to align the mantissa? Because you got 1 value. So, what you are going to do? The lowest, okay, 
the smaller exponent must be the mantissa associated with the smaller exponent must be shifted to right how many times one time okay so that you have to be performed here align mantissa that means smaller exponent mantissa shifted to okay shifted to difference of exponent whatever the difference of exponent you got that is one exponent determined in segment 1 so in segment 1 uh, whatever the value that you got that how, that times you have to be shifted so what is the value so x is the same 0 0.9504 into 10 cube and what is the y value you have to shift it to the right 0 0.08200 then you will get it as a 10 cube now both exponents are equal so whatever so you you are already done the alignment align the mantissa after align the mantissa then only you are able to do the subtraction and addition because you will get the both exponents are equal so whenever you get the both exponents are equal so try to perform addition or subtraction so the third step is the third step is add mantissas now you have to add you can add the mantissas because exponents are equal you can add mantissas or you can subtract the mantissas so that means suppose if you take the addition x plus y so what is the x value so what uh, the x value is 0 0.9504 into 10 cube okay so plus 0 0.08200 into 10 cube so if you perform the addition operation you will get 1.0324 only add mantissa oh, add mantissas into 10 cube okay you done the addition and subtraction so the last step what is the last step you have to normalize the result try to normalize the result normalize the result so why you're normalizing why you're normalizing the result because to get the fra get fraction with the non-zero first digit the why we are doing the normalization means to get the fraction whatever the fraction here it is there fraction with non-zero i want this fraction part should be starting one should be the non-zero if it is non-zero you have to be normalized suppose here one or two three four five any value is there other than non-zero there is no need to normalize but if there is a non-zero value okay if there is a zero value you have to be fractionized you have to normalize so to get the fraction with non-zero first digit okay so so how you are going to normalize so to normalize the simple step is try to shift the shift bits to right shift bits to the right so now i am trying to shift the bits whatever the z value you got you try to shift the bits to the right then you will get 0 0.10324 into 10 power 4 okay now you got the value the fraction whatever the fraction the starting number first digit is a non-zero value so this is how you have to here the operation is going to be performed the comparator shifter editor subtractor incrementer and decrementer in floating point pipeline are implemented with the, some combinational circuits so see here there is a chart so here the exponent and the mantissa so let's try to implement whatever the so this is a pipeline organization so this is the way the pipeline organization for a floating point addition and subtraction is going to be happen okay so the exponent is there frac uh, mantissa is taken so what whatever the values let's our values is x is equal to uh, 0 0.9504 into 10 cube this is our inputs and the y is equal to 0 0.8 200 into 10 square so this is what the values we got inputs given so first exponents a and b so 3 and 2 and what are the mantissas this is the a value and this is the b value so try to store the a and b values in the register and in the mantissa also try to store a and b values in the register now segment 1 what is the segment one we have to compare the exponents so how you are going to compare the exponents you have to make the difference the highest value you have to be taken and the lowest exponent 3 minus 2 
1. So you got the result as a 1. So while comparing the exponents and storing the value in the register. So in the register one value is stored. And storing the value in the register. Mantisa is not doing any operation. Because we are working only on the exponents. So at that time Mantisa is not doing any operation. It's just the values A and B are stored in the register. That's it. So after that whenever the uh, register stores the value 1. Now we have to align the Mantisa. So, how you are going to align the mantissa? So, we have to, uh, the mantissa associate with the smaller exponent. So, the mantissa, whatever that is there with the smaller exponent must be shifted to the right. So, now the mantissa is going to be aligned. Okay. So, the mantissa is going to be aligned. So, at that time, at that time, we have to choose the exponent in the stage 2. In the stage 2, you have to choose the exponent. What, what exponent? So, which uh, uh, alignment has to be done? So, you have to choose that exponent. So, and then you have to align the mantissa. So, again, that store that value into the register. So, in the register, A value and B value are going to be stored. So, here A and the updated B value is going to be stored. Now, you have to perform the operation addition or subtraction in the of mantissa at stage 3. At stage 3, you have to perform addition or subtraction. Okay, you have performed the addition operation. Okay, or you have performed the subtraction operation. Whatever you want, you can do. So, after doing that, you got the value as 1.0324 into 10 power 3. Okay, so now you are uh, at the stage 3, you are going to store the value, exponent value, whatever it is there. That is the 10 cube is stored. And at the perform the operation. So, addition or subtraction. So, here... The 3 value is stored and here 1.0324 is stored. This is the mantissa value and this is exponent value. So, whatever the updated exponent. So, both uh, exponents are equal. So, that exponent value is stored in R and the mantissa addition or subtraction. So, addition exponent value is stored in R. Now, at the stage 4, you have to adjust the exponent. So, how you are going to adjust the exponent? If you do the normalization, normalizing the result, then you try to adjust the exponent. Otherwise, you simply store in the register. So, okay, I am going to do the normalization because the first digit in the fraction part is the 0. You have to get the non-zero. So, normalize. How you are going to normalize? Shift the bits to the right. 0 0.10324. Okay, this is the normalized result. And what will be the exponent now? Now, the exponent value is the 4. So, that 4 exponent value is stored in the register and the normalized res, uh, result is stored in the register. So, this is how the floating point uh, arithmetic pipeline organization for floating point addition and subtraction. So, I hope you get your uh, answer. Okay. So, in the next video, I will explain the fixed point multiplication, the arithmetic pipeline organization for fixed point multiplication. Thank you.